Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Sastel Curling Stadium's live coverage of the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. It's live and swift current. We're on day two and yet already about to declare the first of the playoff teams. My name is Sean Joyce. I'm joined for this morning's broadcast by Mark No. Hey, and uh, we've got the A qualifier here, the first of the A qualifiers. John Epping against Team Nicholas Adine, <laughs> minus Nicholas Adine. Mark, did you have a chance to see any of the games yesterday? Uh, I didn't get to watch uh, a lot of the games. I got to see some of the highlights. Um, looks like uh, Oscar, uh, Erickson made a really nice double there um, at the end of the game. And yeah, just to be able to pick that out clean was uh, pretty impressive. He made three or four fantastic doubles in that game yesterday. And there's been a lot of highlights already through day one. Wow. Nicholas Adin, uh and I was watching it a little bit, uh, apparently injured his knee last weekend. And at the time, they were hoping that he might be back for this weekend. It didn't work out that way. He's still, uh, still favoring it a little bit. So they've been playing shorthanded it, through their first two games. It hasn't seemed to hurt them. They do have the hammer here after the draw to the button prior to the game. And uh, throwing the red stones here in the first end. Just the three guards in play right now. And... Oscar Erickson would like to see a few fewer guards near the center line, so looking to make a play on them. Christopher Sundgren, normally the lead on the team, ask, being asked to throw three stones here this week. Sweeping the second slash third in this lineup. Rasmus Rana, Oscar Erickson skipping the team, throwing the last two stones. Well, of course, Nicholas Adin out of the lineup right now. Makes the double peel, rolls the shooter out, just leaves the one corner guard for now. And John Epping is going to ask Patrick Jansen to come around that. This is a new lineup for John Epping this year, too. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about this because uh, I, I wasn't familiar. How many... How many uh, new faces do we have on the septing ring? <laughs> well, I'm not sure how to answer that because I, it, Scott Chadwick is the lead, and I don't think he's played with John before. Now that Patrick Jansen is is new to the team, so to speak, this year, but I I do believe, and I'd have to go back and look myself. I do believe he and John have played together before. Matthew Cam playing third has played with John for a number of years now and played a couple of different positions, and of course John Epping the skip. And if you want to talk about highlight shot making, he's got the ability for that himself. Should be quite the matchup this morning. 
Yeah, yeah. I've always been a big fan of John Epping's uh, big weight abilities. He's never afraid of a run back and always enjoy watching his games. The other thing that I was thinking about myself, it was kind of interesting about just the way the draw was done here. A lot of times you see these teams, when they get to the A qualifier, and don't get me wrong, nobody's going to pass up a spot through the A. But you get through the A, you win your A qualifier on Saturday, and then you sit and wait to play until Monday morning. The playoffs here in Swift Current this year are actually going to start Sunday night, which I think might be a little bit of an advantage for some of these teams coming through the A, as opposed to a normal event where they have an entire day where they don't play a game. Yeah, they're going to sit for a while, but they're still going to play tomorrow. Yeah, I, I've I've only had a chance to play at um, some some tournaments of longer duration, and I never liked having an off day myself. It just gives you just plenty of time to get in trouble. Um, probably not a <laughs> probably not a problem for these professional teams, but you know, for for me and some of the the hooligans I curl with, yeah. It, uh, we, we, we find trouble on when we have time. I am familiar with that experience. The other thing that I think that does cause some problems for some of these teams is that, of course, they condition these rocks before the event starts, and you see this massive amount of curl as, as the event begins, and the rocks will settle down a little bit as they get go through use. Not that they don't curl, but it will change a little bit. So that team that sits for a full 24 hours while the ice is changing, sometimes they don't, uh, they don't have the the feel of the ice quite as much as the teams that have continued playing all along as it was changing. Yeah. While we we're talking, a really nice shot by uh, Matt Cam there, because to get to that shot, that was uh, overburied a bit. Have you seen this, uh, this much curl uh, all uh, in the previous draws? It, we have. Yes. There's certainly big late finish. And it was something I happened to, to work a few of the games at the women's event a couple of weeks ago as well. And uh, again, they had conditioned the rocks right before the event started. So very, the rocks are very aggressive early on in the event. They'll settle down a little bit as we go on, but they're always going to have plenty of curl. So I, I've got to ask here so that someone's not familiar with uh, with some of that terms here. So when you're saying conditioning, are you talking, I'm familiar with the concept of like papering the rocks. Is that the same thing or is that it's a slightly the, different it's process? It's the same thing. Everybody calls it something different. Uh, okay. I've talked to a couple of ice makers that, that hate the word. Of course, they used to call it sandpapering, and they just yeah. hate that phrasing because if you've ever seen the sandpaper they use, it's one of the finest grits. And like you, you couldn't take the skin off your fingers with that sandpaper. And really, as I, I've had it explained to me, and whether this is true or not, and you get some of the manufacturers on, they could talk, speak to it better. It really doesn't do much to take uh, the edge off the stone itself, but there are, from what has been explained to me, there are microscopic pits and and uh, ridges in the surface of the granite itself and uh, they fill in over time with silt and other debris and that sandpaper takes that out and and roughs uh. up the edge again so that now there's something there to grab i don't i'm, I'm not an ice maker i've only that's only what's been explained to me but it makes sense right yeah i wouldn't have thought that but that explanation does make sense to me because you know i because you know i've always pictured you know uh, coarse, you know, sandpaper, and we've always <laughs> talked about you, you only. It's a limited amount of time that you can do this, um, you know, because it's 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 pretty abrasive to the rock. So, so hearing your explanation makes a bit more sense to me. I, I know they're not using a, a a coarse sandpaper. It's very very fine. Interesting. But it is amazing how much difference it makes. And I uh, I was involved in the players' association here in Saskatchewan when we were first trying to get uh, ice makers involved in. In sanding rocks and of course now even the manufacturers recommend it so it's it's much easier now to convince people that it that it should be done and it, at that time and that's only about 20 years ago we were talking we always talked about ice ice is straight ice is straight ice is straight well now it makes perfect sense if your rocks will curl it's easy to make ice curl it's not the ice that curls it's the rock so the things that we learn as we go along yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 an ever evolving sport, and more technology is uh, and knowledge is it's always kind of fascinating. The little hit there, roll to a biter, does actually cover up shot rock. John Epping without last rock here in the first end might just opt to to cover that now and see if he can't steal this opening end. 
think the call there was to roll farther than that. They wanted to make John Epping, John Epping make a play on it and perhaps leave them a double. Yeah, now if they're if they're looking to guard that, does it make much of a difference if they actually wrap around it and just say go like top eight or is that it well it could. And and only because if you if you try to come around it and you don't bury a piece, it's a nose hit double on the yellows. Yeah. If you corner freeze the red. Oscar Erickson probably has no choice but to just, yeah, just peel the two of them out so that he's got some kind of shot with his last one. Pretty good spot here for uh, for Team Epping early in this game. I, I do think uh, Team Adine wanted to roll farther than that on that last attempt. Nice hit, nice control of the weight, but they didn't get the roll they needed. So John Epping with his first here in the first end, looking just to guard the situation in the rings. Has some curling to do, but we know these rocks really finish hard. Yeah, and does finish just nicely. Well, now decision time for Oscar Erickson. Do you try the double peel on the guards? Or, and I think the other shot he was looking at is coming around from the, what would be his intern as a left-hander, try to corner freeze that yellow and hope that you got a chance to to pass it through somehow with the last one. Right there is what he's talking about. Is so don't don't really think he's looking too hard at playing the guards. It's a tough double peel and it probably comes back. Yeah. Is there ever a situation where you could maybe make a play on the front and maybe just kind of, well, I guess a, does a split help you out at all? No. Well, I mean, if you you kind of move that out of the yeah. way of the yellow, make it accessible, and you have a couple counters on the side, so you can actually maybe try to make a rip at the the one on the top four. Although, I think the thing that John just probably this, just goes top top eight. Yeah. The part of the split that would probably help you most is the one that you push over to uh, the left hand side of the sheet from the overhead view, because that one would be able to be promoted onto the yellow. Yeah. But uh, of course, John Epping knows that too, and he's he's going to take that away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, if you if you split, you maybe have a couple options for for some sort of run here. But it's playing this. I they've gone back to the double peel, which is what I initially thought I, they would play, just because it it probably makes sure you have a shot for your last one. Yeah, you I may not so. have a may not have a shot for two, but right now it's tough to score. Yeah. Now he is trying to line them up to see if he could bring the red back into the yellow. Not, not critical. Uh, mostly important just to get the two guards out of the way. Yeah. The yellow at the top is going to go across the top of the red, so that red will come back through the house somewhere. Honestly, if you hit the ones in the house, you're more likely to jam the yellow onto the back than you are to pick it clean, but th they'd be happy to move it at all. Even if you jam it, it's behind the T line. This is going to overcurl on them. Yeah. Makes the double peel, but leaves the shooter right there. So still, John Epping sitting one, corner of the button behind cover. If there's a saving grace at all for uh, Team Adeen, it's that John Epping, when he loops this second one around, can't get second shot off of it if he comes to the face of his own. Yeah. Even saw, I think, Matt Cam take a look at that just to see if we come to the face... Could have been a chance to steal two here, but if they leave this where they would have to be to be second shot, they'd be cornered on their own, and that might leave Oscar Erickson enough room to make the double. Pressure's on this one a little bit early. John threw this, of course, knowing that he couldn't afford to be heavy and bounce off. Yeah. Throw it to the brushers. 
And if you come up that little bit short, really, what does that change? Yeah. Oscar Erickson's still going to have to play a draw. Well, he drew to the button in the pregame to get last rock here in the first end. Now we'll see if he can do it again with that last rock to pick up the single point. Had a chance to call one of their games yesterday, so I was aware of this, but probably should point it out. It's, it's always interesting when you see these three-man teams and how they want to align it. Christopher Sundgren, who throws the lead stones for the team, holds the broom here for Oscar Erickson. Rasmus Rana will be the brusher. And we did see a number of times yesterday in the game that I that I called for them. Uh, I know Oscar has played a lot of doubles. Don't know about the other two, but and here yeah. you see him coming. You will see these guys when they're playing the three-hand formation uh, come up and sweep their own rocks quite a bit. No need to sweep that one. Maybe just a hair heavy. Looks pretty close here. I think it has slid just a little bit too far. So it looks like a steal of one for John Epping. We're going to take a look at it. A little shaking my head. Looks like it's kind of close. Right. Well, we're going to have a measurement, it looks like. Let's stick to it. Now, I haven't actually physically been in the building, so I don't know how dead center our camera is over the pinhole, but it. my initial thought is it looked like yellow. And I thought by a fair bit. But, you know, yeah, I agree the with you there, you, Sean. Yeah. One of the things when you're mounting a camera, I've been doing this for a number of years, one of the things when you're mounting a camera in a building is you have to work with what's there. And if we're a couple of inches off the center line, dis distorts your center line, the, the T line, it uh, distorts your angles just ever so slightly. Uh, thanks to everyone that's joining us uh, on the uh, YouTube feed on Curling Zone. We got over 400 people watching, and because uh, that clock, I believe it's uh, a steal here. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think it is yellow here. So, and of course. It's the curlers measuring, not an umpire, so they don't point at the rock to tell us for sure, but yeah. I do believe it was a steal of one. John Epping will have a one-point lead when we come back.
Second end already underway here from Swift Current. First one was brought into the rings, came deep to the back of the eight. The Dean team puts up the corner guard, and now John Epping. And I didn't see the indication. I don't know whether you saw it, Mark. Is, are they coming into the house here or throwing a guard? Uh, I think they're coming in here. Okay. This one's over Boy, this one's, a little bit. Yeah. Had it made the house, it would have been well off the center line. I think they opted to stop sweeping just to make sure it would stop near center. So they do end up with a guard just off center. Not really, they weren't really thinking about guarding the one at the back of the eight. That's not the issue. It's just that you don't have last rock, so you play a center guard. Hoping to eventually take uh, Oscar Erickson's attention away from the corner. For now, Christopher Sundgren going to try to draw around that corner guard. If he is buried, I don't think he can get shot rock over the one at the back, but that's not... Uh, it's not important this early in the end. That just shows you how much finish there is on these rocks. He had uh, probably close to a foot of room coming by the guard and only had top 12 foot weight. It's half buried. Had he put that one on the T line, you wouldn't be able to see it. Patrick Jansen now, the out turn, quiet weight, looking to remove that stone that was just thrown. This is just the fifth stone of the end. They do have to be a little careful coming by the guard. And this one moving early. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is all over the guard, yeah. But it may roll to a decent spot. Well, of... if he kills the guard, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. And he did. It does, yeah. Not just being the fifth stone of the end, so... That is a free guard zone violation. The guard goes back. The shooter is removed from play. And that's, you know, that's always the tricky thing when you're playing a shot like that. You can see half of that stone. You want to go after it, but you almost have to err on the side of caution and, and uh, take a little extra ice. Yeah. Now, granted, they did jump the sweep on that right away, so that might not have been the broom so much as the throw. You don't usually call the brushers on right away when somebody splits the broom on their release. If I can say that, is that tactful enough? Yeah, no, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> I think it's all right, you know. So are you just making a play at this back one here now? Looks like it. Now for this kind of shot, are you wanting to roll open here or i would think with probably i yeah I, I know what you're thinking i think you're on the right line there i think uh, you'd hate to stay behind that center guard and have john epping freeze to it so you just look to pass that yellow through and roll a little bit further into the open like that yep john's got two rocks he can hit but really no double and hard for him to roll behind cover They do have the hit and roll to, towards the center guard off this one on the corner. But again, it's it's tricky because you can't see. You can only see about half of it. Of course, it's in uh, the back of Patrick's mind that he maybe didn't throw the last one great. This one appears to have a little bit more weight. Well, and, and a lot more line because they're sweeping for curl. And I just wonder if that's one of those things where I started to say that he was sliding out that the last shot was in the back of his mind and maybe yeah. overcompensated a little bit when he when he threw the second one. All the conversation here. And, and granted, we can't hear them, but it'll all be about where do we put the third rock? And Oscar's first thought, you will see this a lot with this uh, Swedish team, especially with Oscar now holding the broom. I saw it a lot yesterday. He'll go through all the options, but the first one that he shows is usually the one he goes back to. It's, how it's, it's his instinct. That's the shot he wants to play. They will discuss the options. Yeah, and I think this makes sense here. 
No need to necessarily group those under the corner, I think was the other other plan. Yeah, and I don't think you want to start coming around the center. You're you're one shot away from having the end taken away from you then. Keep that play away from the center guard if you can. Would have liked to keep this high enough not to leave a double. And I think it will stop in time for that. Matt Cam now being asked to make the hit and roll. In front of that red at the back eight foot, if he rolls past it a little bit, might end up covered as well. So they got a couple of options here. Matt made an outstanding draw on the first end of the stone that ended up on the board. Gonna make the hit here. Might roll past the red one. Yeah, just a little thin, but maybe stick around for a shot. Oh, no. Second. <laughs> See, and after they wouldn't tell us on the measurement, Oscar tells us right away the red is shot rock. Yep. The yellow is partly buried as well, and now the question is, do you, do you really want to be chasing a lot of rocks at the back? I mean, that's his first thought is we, we make the play on this and sit three. No, no mics on the players, of course, and uh, yeah. a lot of times when we do have an international team like this, I'm not sure the mics would help us because there's no likelihood that they're speaking English anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you don't chase this back one, what are your other options here? I mean, are you just drawing at this open point on the time, other side? Think, yeah. Well, no, at this point in time, I think if you were going to come around, you'd come around the middle from the outturn side and, and uh, bury top eight. You, you might never bring that stone at the top of the 12 foot in, but uh, you're still sitting solid to get two, perhaps three. You do need to make sure you get the roll here. If you sit right there, you've started to create a pocket at the back of the eight foot and John Epping will just loop one in and, and take your whole end away. This is really curling on this him. He's got to get some roll. Yeah, I thought they were going to, I thought it was going to overcurl and get down to the, uh, that was a re really good job by Christopher Sundgren on the brush to hold the line there. Spreads it out enough. I mean, if he stays right on the nose, I think you'd probably see John Epping throw a draw. But right now, there's not really a pocket back there. There's too much room between those two. So it's going to make a play on Shot Rock. Try to roll it over behind that center line guard again. And he knows there's a lot of room from the guard to the stone at the back. Oscar Erickson probably make another play on it, but he starts to get those rocks grouped and he only needs one pocket back there and then one good draw and he, he's out of this end. Needs a little bit of finish on this one if he's going to get the roll. Gets a little bit of a roll, but not quite enough here. So no. let's see. Just stayed out in the open and, and left enough for... Uh, Team Adine to play the hit and roll back to the open side. Nose hit probably leaves enough room for the double, although You'd have to curl past the guard to make it. If he only rolls a couple of inches, the double's there for sure. You need to get a about an 18-inch roll minimum here just to not leave a double. And yet, don't want to roll out of the house either. It's going to be pretty close here. That's some, yeah. Good finish lost at the it, end. Wow. Lost it a little at the end. Gets a, a few inches of roll, but there's definitely angle there for a double now. John Epping didn't look at it too long, puts the broom down. And I think with that broom, we're going to see, uh, see some weight coming here. It doesn't, doesn't have to absolutely whip it. It's not that, that flat, but you want to make sure you have enough weight to kill that second stone. And you know, if he hits this right, there's enough of an angle there. He could come off the first one and a little off the top of the second one, he might spin up for shot rock and in behind some cover. 
that would be greedy, but uh, John Epping can make those shots. I'm going to push it for a little bit of curl here. Makes the hit, comes across. Caught a little bit of the front edge of that rock, and you saw it start to spin up, just didn't have the legs to get up under cover. Still removes two, and he is shot rocks. Oscar Erickson going to have to make a play on it. Looks like he's got room, perhaps, to roll under cover as well. Wow, that looks I, that looks like a lot of ice because it's a reverse staggered port. It looks a little tough to roll that direction with quiet weight. Just because of the type of port that he's got to come through, I thought he might be almost forced to throw a little bit more weight. Not that he can't. You know, he's he's yeah. perfectly comfortable doing that. It's just it goes against your instinct when you when you're trying to hold a rock in the back of the house like that. You just the quieter you can throw it, the easier it is to make sure you hold the shooter. It's just it makes that port a little tougher. Yeah, we'll see how uh, Team Medine kind of navigates this 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 line here. Oh. Have to wait for it to get off the center guard before they can do anything with the brush. Moving now. Oh, gotta go now. Gotta go. Makes the hit. Rolls it right in behind the corner guard. Nice. Team of Dean sitting two. John Eppin can't really do much with the two stones that are there. He, he could play a, a pick on the top one, I guess, and concede to. It's not an easy pick, though. They've already missed that rock twice. Yeah. Looking I was going to say, around. yeah, I mean, are you kind of surprised they're not? Because, I mean, that, that shot was still there that was there earlier in the end, right? That kind of, like, quiet rate hit and roll kind of towards the center. Yep. Yeah. Again, they, they've missed it twice already. That's true. <laughs> it, the uh, the thing about this one with that redstone at the back that uh, Oscar just rolled over, if you uh, get half around the guard on this draw attempt, top eight foot, it's pretty hard for Oscar to get it out without uh, jamming it on that stone. Now, the one thing you can't do oh, is over curl the curl guard. Them. This needs to stop on him. Stops in a really good spot. The only shot Oscar's got for multiples now is to play some sort of run back. I thought he might look at the yellow straight back, but he's looking at the angle on the red. And I saw him make one of these yesterday. Huh. Yeah, it's I would have thought the the yellow ones would have been a bit more straightforward. Granted, that's only for two. He's got to make the double if he throws the yellow, but they're closer together and it's a little bit more straight back. This, uh, it's the distance between the rocks that more than the angle that, that makes this one difficult because the farther there is between the two stones, the less room for error you've got. But he came to this pretty quickly, and so I think he's had this in his mind for the past minute or so. Well, they were, they were probably already discussing it before uh, John went down to the other end. They knew John was playing the draw, so what are we playing if he makes it? The angle's not bad. Like, he's probably a little thicker than half a rock. Anytime yeah. you're hitting over half, that's fairly comfortable. The issue is just that, as I said, when there's that much distance between the two rocks, you don't have a lot of room for error. There is the potential for three here. Even if he just makes contact with it, bumps it out, and loses the, the raised stone, it's for two. On the brush early. Needs to hit just a thick half here. This looks like it's going to be a real thick half. And just drives it between the stones in the rings. It's going to be another steal of one for John Epping. He'll take a 2 nothing lead after two ends of play. Team Adine with last rock again in the third.
I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? It doesn't get much better than that. Sean Joyce, Mark No, with you here live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. Third end underway. Steals of one in the first and second for John Epping has him leading 2 0 here as we begin playing the third. And they've started the end with center guard, one at the top of the eight in behind. Tima Dean had thrown the corner guard with the first stone and looking now to corner freeze on a shot stone. This might be just a little strong. It's going to bump off. Now, for, for teams that are looking to come into to, to corner freeze in that situation there, does it make a difference on which side uh, relative to the corner guard that you're coming in on? Or Well, it, every team's got their own preference, of course. Um, you know, I might have been tempted, if, if you knew the line for sure, I'd have been tempted to come from the other side because then everything is geared up, geared up to go towards your corner guard when you start playing the, uh, the hits later. The taps, yeah. Yeah. They may get a chance here. Yeah, that rolled a little farther than they would have liked. Does make the, the hit and uh, sits two for the time being. Oscar looking at just tapping that shot stone again, almost straight back. You tap it straight back about a foot, you've got a double available off the one that just rolled over. It's always fun to watch how these teams will approach these types of ends. Of course, there's no panic in any of them. They're quite comfortable with rocks in play. They know they can move them later on. Yeah, yeah especially with the, the double-making abilities on both sides here. Um, you know, things, things can change in a hurry. Got a nice line coming in. It's actually going to get past the nose. Wow. We'll get to that corner on the other side. That was kind of the shot they were looking for on the last one, although they came at it from the other direction on the last one. I 
Vadim continuing to sit one right now. His first thought was to uh, follow the red around now, wondering, do we double peel? Do we ever double peel? <laughs> Without last rock, you've only got a two-point lead. It's a pretty defensive call, but... Yeah. You got a place for it. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm okay with coming in there. Well, there's still shot rock, too. That's, that's yeah. the other thing about it. This is a straight defensive call right here. And if you don't get the second guard, I, I'm not sure it helps you a lot. Yeah. Patrick Jansen looking for the double peel, catches the yellow, comes across the top of that red, clips it, doesn't completely remove it from play, but does move it wide enough, really not protecting much anymore. Uh, we do have someone chiming in the chat. Yes, the, the score is, uh, it is 2-0 for uh, Epping over a Dean. We'll uh, work with production to get that corrected here. Is he going back four? He is. He's looking at coming around those two staggered stones. I, I always like that call. I, I I say I like that call not necessarily from the strategy standpoint, just but for the fact that nobody calls it or you know like it's. Well, you certainly don't usually see it in the third end. It's usually more of a desperation last part of the game type of shot. But yeah. On this ice, it'll definitely go, and uh, your only other option at this point in the end is throw some kind of a guard. And John Epping has already illustrated that he's willing to just peel these guards and and uh, force you to blank this end. Not only is he going to come around those two stones, but those two stones in the eight and biting the four, he comes around to the back four and he's buried. Yeah. It's well played. So Matt Cam going to make a play on the two stones at the top of the eight foot. It's that red anywhere, nose or a little on the high side. The red and the yellow both go. They like to roll their shooter a little bit at least to open up the back one. Important to hang that on the edge of the 12 foot because that might be the stone that uh, gets you the force as opposed to the chance for the blank. Oscar looking at the hit and roll over, possibly the double, and you did see him indicate we have to be a little careful not to jam this on our own. Yeah. yeah but <clears throat> now I can possibly bring that 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 cornerist of guards there into play. True. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to play hard for the for the double or just the the the, the roll. Yeah, I, I think they're more inclined to just play the roll instead of. The straight double just to keep the shooter around yeah you even saw oscar indicating hit roll over touch the second stone and spin up a little bit you don't have a lot of room to spin up and still be in the house though yeah hard to tell from uh even the overhead camera angle if there's if this rock is high enough can you hit and just roll over and sit anything in front of the corner of that yellow stone, or are you going to be right into the side of it? I think there's enough room to... You think it's high enough? To, the, to get, yeah. This is a little tricky, trying to cross the face here. Well, he had the line that they needed, and just with that quieter weight, the control weight doesn't get quite enough of a roll. A double would be thin, and, and you'd lose your own. Yeah. So I think John Epping just looking at the hit and roll here. Yeah. 
And yeah, I, I think set something up a better opportunity later here. And I think Makes with sense. that ice, uh, I was going to say he's probably going to be looking at some bigger weight too, because you got to hit the first one fairly full to make sure you don't clip your own yellow at the side of the 12 foot. Not that losing that doesn't kill you, but it uh, takes away the the force. So if you've got to hit this first one fairly thick and you want to get the big roll, you need a little bit more weight. And this is taking this is off curling. on them. Oh my gosh. Jams it dead into the side one and misses the wow. second stone as well. <clears throat> we were just talking about a force and now a deuce is certainly in play. And, and uh, if you can't make a double, yeah, this is looking like three. There is a double there, but there's a lot of room between those two rocks. You know, it's it's been an interesting game so far. We've we, we've seen some some missed hits from from Team Epping, you know, uh, and they still have this two zero lead. You know, it's uh, pretty interesting and see how this is uh, kind of shaped up so far. Well, of course, we don't have. Uh mics on the players or even any audio from from ice level at all right now but uh so you couldn't hear a sweep call or anything to indicate i just thought the way that john epping stood up it looked like i wonder if that one didn't pick on them because it seemed like it yeah, was gone right. all of a sudden yeah it, it there's a lot of late movement there you know uh, maybe i think around the, the the near hog line uh from the from the skip perspective so that's uh, just the way John John's head came up. That's usually like something just happened that that he wasn't expecting. Is what I thought. It, that's what I saw anyway. Maybe got a bit of an unfortunate break there, and as unfortunate as they could get because not only did they not make the shot they were looking for, actually jammed it on their own. All right, now which double do you like here? They're both tough because the one at the back that uh, John's looking at is very thin, and I think the indication was he's just going to play the hit and roll in just front of it. roll on top of it, yeah. Yeah. Had that rock stopped about a foot higher, it's a pretty natural half rock double, but right now it's really thin. Yeah, that was well managed, well swept to, to make sure that there's enough separation, but of course you got to keep it in the ring, so... Of course, if John Epping can get a roll in front of that stone, it doesn't even have to be dead in front of it. Even if he's, uh, you know, he could be a rocks with to the center line side of it. Oscar Erickson wouldn't be this able to play a hit on it. And this one's curling, curling as well. Yeah, it's actually going to cross the face. Get to the low side, yeah. <clears throat> Chance for Oscar Erickson. If he can make the hit and roll here, there, there may not be a double anywhere. I guess the the long cross house double is there. I don't know if that's something that uh, John Epping would be thrilled to take on. Mind you, if it's the only double he's got, he might play it. Yeah, yeah, he may. He yeah, just may be forced to at this point. So, Sean, do you think we're going to start seeing teams make some adjustment with their hits uh, and how they're how they're icing it, or you know whether that's you know uh, throwing more weight and playing it tighter or more rotation or do you just kind of have to uh you know they'll they'll figure it out it's it's one of those things when you've got these aggressive rocks especially when there's late movement it makes a big difference yeah exactly you have to exactly match the weight that you throw to the broom because really the one of the reasons that they finish so late is that the big movement comes as the rock is starting to slow down it grabs a little bit more so if you're throwing, calling for bumper weight and you throw hack weight, well, that rock is going to move drastically more. Whereas, you know, in a lot of times in curling clubs where the rocks aren't quite as sharp, everything's going to move close to the same amount. Here's one where Oscar Erickson's got a little bit more weight than John Epping did. And again, he yep. won't take the finish because he's got that little bit more weight. The rock wasn't slowing down as it came into the house. Still sits in a pretty good spot. No easy doubles. Not sure with that broom. He's got a lot less ice here. Is he looking to play the big weight double? Yeah, it's this very is like a, thin. Like just to redirect, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm surprised he's not taking the other double. The other double seems, I mean, it's flat, but seems way more natural to me. So John Epping with his final stone here in the third end without last rock facing three, looking for a double. They were on the brush right away. He's got to hit this first one very thin. He's close. Makes the hit, comes across, and just over oh, the top of the stone over the back. Top. Wow. He gave it a good run, and I think when they made contact with the first, they thought they probably had it. I thought they probably had it. You couldn't hit that first one much thinner. Yeah, you really, really cut it, yeah. Does give uh, Oscar Erickson the chance now to draw for three, and after giving up back-to-back -back steals in one and two, this would be his first chance to take the lead. Oscar Erickson, his final stone of the third end. Already sitting two, trying to draw for three. Jumping up to help the sweep on his own stone. And it was one of the things I noticed yesterday, of course, Oscar being left-handed. So when he jumps up and joins uh, Rasmus, they actually both are able to sweep with their uh, slider foot as the lead foot. It, oh, it gives yeah, them a nice combination. Yeah. Puts it right on the button, doesn't need to brush it at all. Three points on the board for Team Adine. They jump out to a 3-2 lead. John Epping will have last rock for the first time when we come back for the fourth. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check, it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo. Oscar Erickson with the draw for three to finish off the third end. Now beginning this fourth end with a 3-2 lead, and they threw the center guard with the first one. Team Epping followed up with the corner guard, and now the come-around attempt on the center. Christopher Sundgren. Oh, my apologies. Looks like they were playing the second center guard here. John Epping opting to come around those two center guards. And I think this is a case of you could use your own corner, but those guards are overlapped. You're going to have to deal with them eventually. And you don't want to let Team Adine get in there first for Shot Rock. So looking for the come around on the staggered guards on center. Well, 
lot of room by the front. Don't want to be too deep on this one. You bring this in even to the top of the forefoot, you'd see Oscar Erickson look to follow it down and, and he'd shrink the ring. So that's a great spot for that stone. It's buried top of the eight foot. Even if they freeze to it, you've got lots of room to score a second point. Sundgren will look to come down and try to sit on the top of that yellow, maybe on a bit of an angle. Doesn't want to bounce off this rock at all. Boy, he's going to leave that in a great spot. The nice thing about that angle, if John Epping doesn't do anything with the guards at all, you can still see a little piece of that red that gives you the chance to to use it to get rid of the Yellowstone and leave something behind cover. For, for the time being, John Epping going to look to come around from the other side, try to sit two. After Jansen and the intern draw, they were on the sweep right away. It's not just the stone out front that they're worried about getting by. They have to worry about getting by their own at the top of the eight. Great job by the brushers to get by. Now, when they had to sweep it the whole way, it ends up a little bit deep. But it is Epping sitting two for the time being. It does allow the possibility that... Uh, Team Adine could follow that stone down, sit in front of it, and kind of take away both of those yellows for now. Gosh, that looks like so much ice, but we do know it finishes here. Yeah, yeah you just watched the, the Jansen stone and how hard it curled. This one definitely has more room early. If the weight's close, it should finish pretty hard here. Really curling now, yeah. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, they can even brush it over. And the difference really between those two stones is that Patrick Jansen's, they had to sweep it one into the other. That one, when he had that, uh, it, it was just about T-line on its own. Didn't have to touch it earlier, so he had plenty of line early, and it still moved lots at the end. John Epping going to have to start cleaning up things on the middle now. That stone, well buried, over buried on the tighter of the two center guards. So looking to double peel here. Might come into the rings and, and uh, start moving those things off the top of the eight foot as well. Yeah, because he's going to be trying to get this red to <clears throat> almost, it's a double, but kind of going over the top of that red one, yeah. He's playing the double over the top. Might come into the two in the house and again the way they're angled it's hard to say how everything's going to spill in the rings well he hit the other side of the redstone makes the double but leaves his shooter there for a center guard the red yellow combination at the top of the eight foot hard to tell from from an overhead view you really have to defer to the players on the ice but it looks to me like it might clip that red at the back of the button um yeah, it looks. Yeah, I, I would think so. And then, again, if you if you bring, but that probably goes on to the yellow at the back after it does. So. That's true. Yeah, you never get it to that to that low side. And then, you know, I I don't know. I mean, the rocks there's there's some separation, but I, I can't imagine there's much of a drag effect on the on that top one. Probably a better look at it from the shot behind the house. It's, it still looks to me like it. Uh, the yellow would come across the top of that red, but clip it. However, that probably drives it onto the back stone. And you can't see all of the red stone at the top of the eight. If you're throwing it with any weight, you still have to hit it on the outside. 
So not sure there's really much that John Epping can do with that. They're more worried about taking away the other side. They know he's potentially going to play some kind of run back as well. The concern I would have about playing anything to guard the, as we look at it from the overhead, the left-hand side, is that uh, John Epping can get to shot stone with the, uh, the right-handers intern. Where that stone on the button was, uh, a moment ago with the overlapped guards, it was slightly overburied. It's it's dead buried now, but I I think you can I think you could get to it. So Rasmus Rana going to look to come in top twelve here. This still essentially they're playing it as a guard. They're trying to guard shot rock on the button, but they need some separation with that yellow center guard because they're expecting John Epping's going to try to run something in and make a few go away. Uh, he's coming right by it. I don't think this was the call, but it's going to work out well for them because it, it angles right onto the back stone as well, sitting two now. I didn't see him call that. Now, he may have called it down to the other end and said, if we come up short and stop in the 12 foot here, that's okay too. If you knew you could make that, you might have called it. It's ended up in a great spot. John Epping looking at this uh, red-yellow combination, which now certainly clips the red, but again, now also certainly the red's going right back into the yellow. Yes, straight back into the yellow here. Still, you could get all the rocks out of the area in front of the T-line. We'll the be. first red, the one he's going to make contact with, probably isn't going very far. No. And with this quiet way, it looks like they're just trying to jiggle things around back there, knowing that... Uh, course they're going to have to jam the one so they want to keep the the yellowstone that they're promoting they want to yeah. keep it in that four foot area that has to be a spot where they can use it that's a pretty good result there probably the best they could do might even have gotten shot rock out of it and it changed the angle on the two stones at the top of the eight foot did get shot rock out of it He's now also sitting fourth at the back, and there's a double available on the Reds. And Oscar was looking at possibly playing. Was he looking at playing it themselves to try to spin up and get shot rock? Or was he just indicating this doubles here and it's a problem? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think you kind of have to. Well, I guess you have a couple options here. You can either, you can just, if you freeze to this one here, then you're just leaving Epping the, the outturn draw. If you freeze, I think he's probably coming off the open one and and try to roll over to the back one to sit uh, two that way. Yeah. Is there ever enough curl you can make this with, like, back 12? Probably. Looks like they're playing the picket. Yeah. The other that's option that they'd have, and, and that's one that they, they didn't talk about, although you wouldn't necessarily play it this early, is the yellow-red at the top of the 12 foot are lined up to go pretty much straight back. You could just tap them up to the corner of the button. Probably wouldn't play it this early. So it would leave the angle on this Yellowstone. Well, this one's close to the guard. Great job on the brush to get it by and we'll just pick it out over the top. Wow. And his shooter rolls across without touching his own stone. Well, for John Epping now, if you want to sit two, you play the double. The problem is you're behind the T line. Still not sure what else you'd have. It is possible to spin up, but I don't think there's any way they spin up all the way to the front of the tee. Yeah, I think... What's the other option here, Sean? Is it just drawing, like, top four? Just buried? drawing, yeah. Top four buried. Uh, uh, you won't get to bring your other stones back in, but uh, if you make this double and sit back four foot and Oscar Erickson makes the freeze, well, you're not going to get to bring those other stones in either. Right, so. yeah.
Uh, just checking on that, the YouTube. We got oh. that cam big weight makes the double. Sits right there. Didn't really spin up much at all. Yeah. So, but funny if you look at it, choice. the camera shot from the thrower's end. That stone at the back of the forefoot is dead buried, and if you just perfectly freeze to it, it uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, what John Epping can do with it. He'll be able to follow it down again and get shot rock. He's still going to have a shot to score for sure. Yeah. Their first thought was the, the freeze. And uh, we've talked about it before. They will talk about all the options. I think it's uh, Rasmus Rana looking at the lineup of those two stones at the top of the 12 foot and using the drag. It might be possible to triple the three yellows. He had half a rock on the, on the yellow. That redstone wow, is going to wow. drag back. Yeah. There's definitely, it's definitely going to drag some amount. It wouldn't have to go very far to make the triple. I Actually, see. I'd be more worried that it would go past the nose and, and just jam the back stone. Talked him into it. I thought you might still see him play the freeze. Yeah, I think. Oof. So looking to make contact about half of the yellow stone at the top, maybe even a little thicker than half because they don't want to drag it all the way past that stone at the back. So that yellow will slide all the way across out the side. The red will come back on a bit of an angle. They're hoping to catch the nose of that stone at the back forefoot and double the two at the back. If it comes past the nose, he might jam the back one. Gonna have to be close to half here. This is gonna be very thin. Wow. Well, even at that, it didn't drag past. It touches both stones, leaves the back one, and leaves the shooter in a pretty good spot. Or not the shooter, I guess it's the raised stone. Yeah, that is not a call you'll see in your uh, in your Wednesday night league. <laughs> so Erickson's sitting one. There is room for. Uh, John Epping to make a play on it. He'll have to roll to the open. And he'll look to roll past his own and, and try not to leave a double back there. Still in good shape to get his deuce, depending where he can roll to with this one. Yeah. And these haven't been gimme shots all game. We've we've had some issues with some rocks over curling, you know, in certain spots here. And here you can't you really cannot over curl here. Doesn't look like they're worried about the overcurl because they've jumped the sweep on from the side to try to make it curl. It's going to have so, to come up. He's going to make contact, but out. will he hold the shooter? No, that's going to roll out. Well, that's a bit of a double whammy because not only now does Oscar Erickson have the chance to play the hit at the back, and, you know, had you rolled to a spot where you left him a double, he might have made that as well, but he actually could roll underneath that center guard. You might not have the chance for the blank either. Yeah. Uh, we've got what 700, 730 uh, people on the YouTube chat. It's kind of neat to see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the the comment there. It's that I don't know. That's Chow Michaela. Yeah, Chase. Yeah, I. You know, I I would have thought that was straightforward just kind of that freeze oh is this one see this one looked like a spot like it was going over curl but then it just it kind of flattened out a little bit yeah makes the hit but stays right there so it does give uh, epping the chance to make the hit roll away get the blank keep last rock into the fifth talk a lot about how aggressive these rocks are well one thing that uh, has never changed if you throw it hard it's not going to move it doesn't it's not slowing That's down true. it's never going to grab so and john epping amongst the best at throwing these up weight shots so he puts the broom down on the edge of the rock throw it nice and hard it's going to stay right there all the way down hits half a rock gets his blank end john epping will keep last rock into the fifth end of the play trailing by one
The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Sean Joyce, Mark No with you here from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current. A event qualifier Saturday morning, John Epic, Team Nicholas Adine, minus uh, Nicholas Adine. Adine with a 3 2 lead here as we begin play in the fifth end. John Epping does have last rock. Christopher Sundgren through the center guard with his first one. There you see that just finishing as we came back from the commercial, Scott Chadwick with the come around to the top of the eight foot. Sundgren now looking to follow that stone down, actually coming from the other side, not really following it, but looking to come and sit on top of it again. Wow. There was not a ton of separation between the center guard and the rock. Uh, top eight foot, but did get a find in, just that buried. Nice, nice and aligned there. John Epping looking to at least eventually get the play away from the center. Asking, uh, Scott Chadwick to come. I, th I think the call here was right in. This is a situation, and you see this a lot. We talk about it a lot during the broadcast with these top teams. You know, my, my playing days are well behind me, but uh, it used to be that uh, you'd see teams worry about managing last rock in the even ends by about six, seven, eight in an eight end game. Right in, in, with, with these top teams, they're doing it right from the start of the game. They're doing it from the first. So John Epping in the back of his mind before this end even started is thinking we want a blank five and have last rock at six. So not looking to play a corner guard. He's coming right in. And of course, if he can do that, if he can if blank five and, and take that last rock in the six, yes, he's one down. But, you know, I think most of these teams, John Epping, certainly one of them that'll tell you he's pretty happy in that situation where he's one down playing six with last rock. He knows he's got two hammers left. Yes, he's trailing, but I think he'd take his chances in that spot any day. Ooh. Well, they were looking for the straight back run back. Break. Gets it the other way. Takes the stone out of the back. Does still leave Epping sitting one top of the eight foot. And no center guards now, just the one corner belonging to Team Adine. Patrick Jansen's going to look to come around it. 
So, Sean, just to take a step back here. So, you know, if uh, Erickson knows, you know, that Epping's looking for the blank and drawing open there, would it have made sense to just hit the open rock and maybe play that run a little bit later in the end? You could make a case for that, certainly. Of course, Team Dean probably not totally uncomfortable keeping the lead either. You don't want to just hand them a deuce just because... You don't want them to blank the end. Can't see a lot of that rock, but there's really no double available off the top one either. And if you if you play the one in the middle, you still have an issue with that uh, that stone at the corner of the eight foot that was just thrown is still going to be shot rock and. It's not any easier to deal with it on the next one. Yeah. So looking at the run back. Rasmus ran a big way. Christopher Sundgren on the brush. Takes the hit, runs it back. The run back stone is going to roll across the house and just a little too far to sit shot rock and it is behind the T-line. So John Epping looking to freeze to it. Still has the corner guard on the other side too. This has got to be the kind of end John Epping very happy to play this end. Because as I said, he'd be happy to blank this end. If you're going to hand him two, he'll take it. But he, there's there's no risk to him this end. There's no no possibility of a steal sitting there anywhere right now. Not looking good for a force either. So John Epping very comfortable as they play this end. Not able to make the freeze, but again, with where that stone is situated, Oscar can't play the roll back towards the middle. He'll jam it. He knows hits it, I think. Epping's still sitting one, and it will leave a double as well. a pretty comfortable risk-free end right now for for John Epping and uh, if you're Oscar Erickson you, you know you'd love to force this in and get last rock but yeah it, right now you're not seeing that anywhere and this one's taking off oh, this one's, there's the danger yeah. of the jam here well we saw this two ends ago from the Epping team gave away a three on a, on a very similar shot was actually even a thinner jam that stone right off the the very side of the sheet on the other side and now with the jam and and roll too far a chance for epping to set up his own three right now and yeah after this draws made i i'm not seeing any doubles yeah we'll have to see if he if he gets this one because i mean you're you're having to go behind t for this one right if you Yes. If you leave it higher, I guess there's maybe a double somewhere on that side, but... If you can see it, he's got room he could bury this and still be third shot. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he, yeah, yeah. he can still have some eight foot buried on that corner guard. They're on the sweep early now. They backed away. Early sweep usually is an indication they thought they might have been a little bit tight, but he's going to have lots of room coming by the guard. Yeah, plenty of room here. How's the weight going to be? Yeah, it should check up just nice. Well, it's going to make contact with that one here. Comes down to that stone, nudges it back just a little bit, but does sit three. And I don't see a double. No. <laughs> and I don't think Oscar sees a double either. I mean, you're, you're, you're your options the end. are either you're, you're hitting and rolling behind everything. 
well, I think what they're looking at, you, you play that hit and roll, but you do that and it leaves them those straight back on the two at the top. Or yeah. do you ever just hit that stone that's just off the back of the forefoot, hit it on the nose, hope they hit it on the nose again, and then you've got an across house double? Yeah. You could follow the one down that was just thrown, but unless you stay on the inside corner of it, they're still sitting too. That's not a great situation. You can always hit the one at the top, but you won't get second shot that way either. So I think they are making a play on shot rock. I'm just not sure if they're playing for the roll or if they're playing to sit there. Yeah, I suppose you could play it and take either result here. So they may... Playing the out turn. Not sure. You, I mean, you just played the shot yeah, granted exactly. a little higher in the house, but you played it with the other turn, and I'm not sure why they're changing turns. Unless they perhaps just didn't like the way that last stone ran. Looks like they are trying to get hard for the roll here. Makes the hit, gets a roll towards those two, but stays just fully in the open. Unfortunate when you try to roll like that, uh, you've actually probably made it easier for uh, John Epping to roll wide because he's got a little bit more room now. And you roll a little bit deeper when you make the roll too. He could be straight across from that stone on the other side of the eight foot after this is done. And now you're getting late enough in the end, it, it would be too, uh, I don't know that they've got time to even start to move the rocks back together for a double. Looking to make the hit here, does need to keep a shooter in the eight foot. Make the hit, it'll roll across and does stay full eight foot. That's a great spot. Outstanding shot, nice weight control. And this might just be a case of uh, Oscar Erickson looking at making a play on the two at the top now, just so that he has something he can he can bury behind on his for, on his last one. <clears throat> so if if you're if you're making this call on the ones on the center here, do you have to kill that yellow rock, or are you just looking to push it behind T? Yeah, uh, well, I don't think you want to give up four very bad, so you have to kill it. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's fair enough, fair enough. And and the key is I don't think he wants to hit it dead in line. I, they're looking at uh, rolling off a little bit. And the reason for that is John Epping won't be able to play the double because he's got two yellow stones at the back he could jam on. Yeah. So you might be able to leave yourself one or two rocks available to perhaps tap up. If John Epping was to play them and, and nose hit either one of them, he's probably not third shot. Makes the hit, rolls the shooter over just to, enough that he can play a tap on either of those stones. Tough for John to play the double. If he nose hits either one of those, his shooter's not third shot. You really don't want to ignore them either because there's two stones that Oscar could use. Saw so Matt Cam indicating the roll off the yellow, and I think what they're talking about is what's the shot that Oscar plays right now if we don't throw anything, yeah. and he's going to hit that back yellow and roll behind the red. So do you do you worry about trying to take that away? And if you do, how do you do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you just have to hit the one. That's kind of if you're if you're looking for the overhead position, you're you're just hitting the one at the the one o'clock position and just kind of rolling. Here's the thing. If you hit either one of those stones, yeah. you, you're only getting two. Yeah. 
and that's that's exactly why Oscar Erickson played it. I think, and they did talk about it. They, I saw somebody indicate your shot to to keep the three alive is probably to draw around from the uh, from the left side as we look at it facing the house, the right on the overhead, and just come around the edge of that red stone to the top of the eight foot. Yeah. Take away his hit and roll off the back one, kind of Christmas tree them. And I still don't know that there'd be any doubles available, so it keeps three alive. The problem with that is it it leaves Oscar Erickson the two rocks at the top of the twelve foot that are both dangerous stones that if he decides to to make a play on them, he could take the whole end away. Now yeah. he could also give up four. But Yeah, that was a very interesting shot played by Tima Dean here. I mean, I, I still kind of, I don't know. I, I kind of like this. I think the indication, that last indication from John, play the hit on the one on the... Uh, on the 11 o'clock side? On the 11 o'clock side, roll over open. And what he's thinking there probably is if, if Oscar makes the hit on the back one, rolls in behind cover, you're going to have some kind of straight back double that's still for three. Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. So, um, yeah. the double is probably there at the top to miss both of the yellows, but it is risky. There's, it is. It jams on both sides. It's it's hard to make it and miss both of them, but it is possible. You'd have to almost hit the you you'd play to hit the one on that one o'clock side first, a little thin, so that you come into kind of the back side, yeah. or at least dead into the side of the stone at the on the other side. And of course, by hitting the first one thin, you get it over the top of the yellow at the back. Yeah, but if you ever hit the back side of that one, right? You're you're making that double. Does that does that squirt like to the to the forefoot to the T line where you leave well, it double it, back? Yeah, it, it it might. I mean, it'd still be a th if you spin into the top of the forefoot, it's still going to be a very thin double. Yeah. Very interesting. Hard to hit that anywhere without leaving potential for a double. Now, whether or not Oscar would play, it's another story. If you're not sitting three, he's not playing a double, so you'd have to, to kill both of them. Looks like that's what they've opted for. And I think the indication there from Matt, just as he was asking, they knew what they were going to play and, and how they wanted to hit it. I'm not sure they had established which turn he was going to throw. Uh. So John Epping looking for the double on the top two. Needs to be fairly thin on the first, but uh, not so thin that he squirts all the way through like that. Yeah. They were sweeping for some curl. Didn't get quite enough. Makes the double, but when he rolls through, that gives Oscar Erickson a chance to make a play on the open stone. And John Epping will still have a chance for two here. But it could have been three. Yeah. Now, if you're Oscar Erickson here, they had a stone earlier in the end, uh, Rasmus Ranas, that, that really moved on them. So much so that the next time they had a chance to play the hit out here, they threw the other turn. Yeah. So this might be a spot where you're trying to hit this right on the nose, knowing that uh, the spot's a little tricky. And maybe he was a little bit worried about that taking off through a lot of weight. Yeah. I was going to say, it looked like a lot of weight, but... More weight than I expected, yeah. With the rollout, John Epping will have the chance to draw with his final stone. Needs just a little bit better than full 12. We'll pick up the deuce and retake the lead. Sitting one already back of the eight foot needs... As I said, just a little better than full 12. 
pick up his deuce. The brushers pick this one up fairly early. And when it's both brushers, that's usually an indication they feel like it needs the weight. Looks like it's good at the hog line. They're going to keep it going right all the way in, see if they can get Skipper to the button. Yep. It'll be full eight, enough to get his deuce. John Epping takes a 4-3 lead after five ends of play. It'll be Team Dean with Last Rock in the sixth. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up, look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. Saskatchewan, you know SaskTel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With SaskTel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. SaskTel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Sixth end just underway here in this A qualifier. After picking up the deuce and taking the lead, John Epping calling for the center guard here in end number six, and Oscar Erickson throwing on another layer before he calls for the corner. Yeah, it must be cold in there. We've seen it and, and uh, talked about it a couple of times. Uh, there have been a, a few teams. I think I saw Kevin Cooey twice yesterday getting up to three layers of material, uh, three uh, hoodie underneath his, his uniform, and it was a light winter jacket over top of that. I have played in this rink in Swift Current, but it's been a few years. I do seem to recall it being on the cooler side. Yeah. Yeah, someone in the, the YouTube chat was mentioning that they're seeing uh, Oscar kind of bundle up there. We can see, you know, some some jackets in the warm room behind, but... Uh, while this game gets, uh, this end gets underway, we'll just take a quick peek at some of the other games going on here. Uh, for scores and updates, you can head on over to curlingzone.com, but if you don't want to do that right now, I'll be happy to read off some scores to you. Uh, we got a tie game in the Jung Harding game. Um, team Laycock's got a lead of 6-3 to three over Team Burnett in the 6th end. And then we do have a final in the Muir's Calvert match. Uh, Muir's winning that one 8-3. to three. So again, uh, for scores, uh, standings, you can see kind of how the bracket's shaking up. You can head on over to curlingzone.com for uh, latest information there, and other events around the uh, uh, around the globe. I know we've got some some events in in Calgary, um, so some of the other top teams uh, on the women's side playing this uh, this weekend. Triple knockout event here, of course, in uh, Swift Current. So the winner of this game already in, into the playoffs. But uh, everybody's still fighting for one of the eight spots through the B and the C. That uh, Myers game that you mentioned, Dallin Myers picking up the early win uh, in that game. That's a C event action. So we've already had our first team eliminated as well. The other two games, both B event games, there would be three teams qualify for the playoffs through the B, and the last three teams coming through the C. Action continuing on this weekend. We've got draws, this draw, 10 o'clock draw, Saturday morning. We've got two and seven again today. 10, two, and seven again tomorrow. That seven o'clock draw tomorrow night will be the quarterfinals. You can catch all the action from all of the games on the Curling Stadium YouTube channel. 
yeah, it's still wild to me that they're able to provide coverage for all the games. It's like, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it just, you, I, I remember when there's just like, you know, you had to be on the feature, feature sheet, right, to get coverage. Um, I remember those days, but to be able to bring uh, production for, for all these games, this, this is great. Rock's in play here to start this sixth end. So Dean sitting two, or pardon me, uh, Epping sitting two right now. Team of Dean with last rock. They do have third shot buried. And a chance here now to come and make a play on shot stone behind the corner guard. Now, if he's going to get to the nose and, and perhaps even roll buried, he's not going to be sitting shot after this, but... Second and third buried this early in the end is still a pretty strong position for the Adin team. Yeah, and there's there's plenty of curl here, so they should be able to get to the uh, get to the uh, low side here. Although sweeper's not touching this, and now they, they do. For the move now going hard towards that guard. Wow. Not quite enough weight to remove from play, although I don't imagine uh, Oscar thinking really about the blank this end anyway. He definitely wants to score. He'd like to score two, but if you had to take one, you know, teams are always willing to score in the even end. The assumption being, of course, if you don't see a blank in seven, you're going to have a second hammer. So you want to go hard for your deuce here. John Epping looking to play a run back with Patrick Jansen. Wants to be just far enough off the nose to get the shooter off the corner as well. Would have liked to have caught one of those two yellow stones now. Works out well when he comes across because he nudges the center guard and protects shot rock. It was just fully open before that. Yeah, so he's got to make a decision here. I mean, I think they would love to run that back and, yeah, and roll over to a corner, but... Yeah, it's, it's the other guard that's actually protecting shot stone, but you, all you could do with it is really peel it out or, or try the straight back double, but then you leave a double on the corner. So he's looking, like you said, Mark, to, to try to get a couple of things out of this. Run the center guard back, maybe clip the one that's in behind the other guard and, and get a corner out of it all at the same time. This is I, greedy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think... I think you might have to. I think you have to play for the just the hit and roll to the corner. And if you get tick that one on the way, that's that's a little bit of a bonus. Well, but, it doesn't even matter yeah. if you tick it. You could stuff it. If you did jab oh, it, you're at least yeah. shot rock. You might yeah. even be sitting too. Yeah. I mean, I think they have to take this on here. Yeah. I saw him tapping for maybe just going top 12 or top 8. Like buried, but that make a ton of the the downside to hitting this stone again is if if you don't make contact with the shot stone, it's still buried. Yeah. So looking for the slight angle run back, but really a big part of this is he wants to roll over and and protect his own two stones on the corners. Stone this is going to be maybe a little thin. Yeah. Drives it by the stone top eight and rolls too far. I was yeah, kind of worst case scenario. Yeah, you don't get the corner guard and you go over top of the yellow. And then John's got a pretty straightforward double here to sit uh, two or three. Probably three. I don't see him. It'd be tough to roll out and still make the double. I think if you if you were rolling out, you're probably jamming the first one. Although with that broom, you got to think Matt Cam throwing some big weight here at this yeah. double. Makes the hit, catches the second. The shooter rolls all the way across to the other side of the eight foot and does sit three.
and now starting to look very difficult for uh, Team Adine to, to set up any chance to score. Looking to run the guard back, catch the stone at the top of the eight foot. It's the only one in front of the T line in the house, so it's the one causing them the most trouble. But even if you make this, it's still looking like it's tough to get any more than a blank here. Would have liked to have hit a, a little bit on the other side. Does leave a guard up and at least gets the, the stone at the top of the house out from behind cover. And with where he left that guard, had he hit it the way he wanted to hit it, a little bit on the other side, he rolls over to a corner. John Epping probably peels that guard all day, but now it's close enough to center. He's thinking about trying to use it. On the one hand, if you're John Epping, this probably takes the blank out of play and, and perhaps gives you a chance to steal, but it also still leaves rocks in play that uh, Oscar Erickson can try to use to generate two, and he's always going to have, again, he's the left-hander, he's always going to have his out-turn draw available to the button to score. A lot of room by the guard but you can see that rock yeah. almost going sideways as it comes into the house comes down sits uh probably three quarters open that's actually a pretty good spot for it because if oscar makes the hit and roll behind on the stone he's looking at now he might still be able to promote that stone yeah i'll just have a short tap there yeah yeah it's just well it's oscar's just... looking at it as if he thinks it might come into the side of that stone i, I think it's coming behind it He had to make a very deliberate upward motion with his brush to make that touch the other yellow stone. <laughs> yeah. I I don't think rocks roll that way. I mean, yeah, he'd, he'd have to throw like a missile, but even then. Uh, I, I think don't it's think beyond it's a missile. I mean, you might be able to, to make that shot on a pool table if you if you threw some backspin at it, but yeah. I haven't seen anybody throw backspin on a curling rock before. So they just settle on this double here, or this just hit and roll? How well, I think they're playing it as the hit and roll. Now, I, I wasn't sure until they put the broom down. I wasn't sure how hard they were going to play it, because the other thing is that the uh, the first stone you're running back is probably just jamming anyway. I don't think you're getting the double and the roll. Might be a little thinner on the first one than they would have liked, so he gets the double, but in so doing rolls all the way across and out of play well that stone at the top of the eight now works as a guard and it's taking away a little bit of the button some ways it probably looks a little more natural for John Epping to come around from the other side but of course what he's thinking you can see most of that yellow stone if you come around from the other side and just bury around the red guard you've probably left a double on the yellows if he could uh, Christmas tree it right here as we call it just get a piece underneath the yellow one yeah there's no double for Oscar you have to make a choice which one he wants to hit uh, this doesn't seem like that much ice for if they if they want to keep it on this, the left side of center here. So I'll be very curious to see where this ends up. Brushers were on this one early, not just the line, it's it's the weight. They want to get this to the forefoot if they could. Pretty much exactly where he yeah. tapped the ice before he went down to the other end. Top of the forefoot, he's got a sliver of that stone underneath the yellow at the top of the eight. Oscar Erickson could come around from 
what would be his intern side is the left-hander, but the two Yellowstones, one or the other, is probably going to be available to promote onto his stone if he does that. If you don't make something good here, the stone that John Epping just delivered is actually the one that, that can make it very difficult for you to even score on your last one. If you just hit it, you'll have a shot to score for sure, but you're not going to have any chance for two. Yeah. So I guess uh, that's that's the question. Is it important to, to have a shot for two here, and in which case you play the draw and and hope that John Epping is not able yeah. to make the little short run? Yeah, I think you just have to play this 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 run back here and give yourself a lot more option here. You know, it, it is possible you could play the run double the yellows and and if you hit everything spills just right the the red stone that you're running back may spin back in behind uh the stone you're you're throwing you the shooter threw. yeah yeah i mean i think that's, that's a lot to ask for but it is but it gives you a little bit more room to operate you know it's probably your best chance for two this is just uh on the other side of it this is the shot that that guarantees you're going to have a chance to score Now, which one is he playing here? I'm just wondering. He, he could make a play on Shot Rock, but I wonder if he's not playing the higher one, quiet wait, pass it by, and then try to sit in front of the other stone. That could still be there for two. I, I think the they, yeah. yeah, I think they talked about, my guess would be they talked about both options, and, uh, and uh, Oscar said, when I get to the hacks, I'll let you know what I can see, and I think he's decided he can see enough of the top one so they're going to make a play on the top one, try to pass it by everything, and then sit in front of the other one. It will leave them sitting second shot rock, but a short run on the shot, and still probably deep enough in the house they could they could out count the one at the back and and perhaps still get two. It's going to roll a little bit farther than what they would have liked. Still tough for uh, John Epping to ignore that stone, and if he doesn't if he, if he does hit it probably going to have a shot to score at least in a perfect world here you hit and roll right to the very face of your own and then in order for Oscar Erickson to double him. He's got to lose his shooter. He wouldn't be able to play the double. He'd have to throw that in turn draw to the button. Yeah. Although it looked like he set the room pretty quickly. So I think he's just throwing pretty firm at this here. Oh, well, I guess not. They'll be looking for some kind of role. Yeah. He's close. Makes the hit, comes across, yeah, it's and does put it right good. on the face of his own. No way to double those without losing your shooter. Yeah, and that's... You lose the shooter, the one at the back steals, so Oscar Erickson going to have to play the wide draw. Yeah, this is definitely the... Yeah, has to go wide for this one. Yeah. Well, that was the danger in, in not playing the shot stone for Oscar Erickson on his first one, is that you may have a very difficult shot left to score, but it was probably his best chance for two. Just rolled a little too far. Gave John Epping the chance to hit and roll back and makes it perfectly. Oscar Erickson now with his final stone. Facing three Epp encounters, the two at the top of the house and that one biter at the back 12. Needs to draw wide on what is his intern side and catch the edge of the button if he can to pick up the single point and tie this game. There's plenty of room, it looks like here. Brown was just uh, cleaning early, had to wait for the lines, curling now. Going to need to put this pretty much right on the T-line. 
and does grab the corner of the button. Outstanding draw by Oscar Erickson. We're all tied up after six ends of play. John Epping, Nicholas Adeen looking for the first playoff spot. It'll be Epping with Last Rock in the seventh. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? doesn't get much better than that. Seventh end underway here in our feature matchup. The A qualifier. Adin and Epping tied at four as we begin play here in the seventh. Epping does have last rock. And I'm just, we, we, we don't have a camera shot that I can see how this end developed, but I got to think the first rock slipped into the rings. Yeah. It was probably called as a guard, but slipped into the rings. The hit and roll over to the corner. Now the center guard made with the uh, second of the lead stones. And Epping now with uh, his final lead stone. Looking at their options. Yeah, it looks like they're either going back eight or he pointed at a guard, but he didn't seem too happy about it. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised to see him play a guard. Pointing at it, he might have been pointing at playing perhaps the tick as well. For John Epping right here, the, the game plan is simple. You'd like to see either a blank or a deuce. And on the other hand, on the other side of it, the Adin team, they want to see a single point go on the board. They don't even care who scores it. They, they'll take a force. They'll take a steal. But either the other two options aren't good for them. So it, it uh, there's going to be some cat and mouse played this game, or this end. It's always tough when you're in the in Epping situation here because... Going for a deuce versus going for a blank is significantly different in how you approach the end. So you almost have to to wait to see what uh, see what the other Erickson team does. does, yeah, and then react to that. If he's going to give you the blank, you take it. If he's going to give you the deuce, and you see that a lot, a team that's trying really hard to force, and they'll force you to, well, I was going to say they force you to two. I often joke about that and say, <laughs> you get a team trying to force you to one, don't be afraid to let them force you to three. They were looking for the come around, leaves it just out in the open. And here this comes down to exactly what we were just talking about. Oscar Erickson not wanting to leave him the chance for the blank, doesn't want to just hit that. Yeah. So just thinking about a freeze, freeze. keep some rocks in play. 
but in the end, not wanting to force him to three. So I think they've settled on playing the hit. Just one other game left in play here. It's interesting that in this draw, we've got two international teams in the field here in Swift Current this week. The other one, the Koreans, uh, Jong still on the ice. They trail Cody Hartung by a score of five to two. That's in B event action and in the seventh end there as well. Two finals, B event action, Steve Laycock over Damon Bernath, nine to three. And uh, the one C event game, the first C event game, Dallin Myers over Braden Calvert, eight to three. The winner of this game moves on to the quarterfinals tomorrow night at 7 p.m. The loser will be back on the ice at 7 o'clock tonight with a chance to grab a playoff spot through the B event. But the other thing that factors into these playoff spots where you'd like to get that A event berth, the teams have the practice before the game and draw to the button for last rock through the preliminary round. Once you get to the playoffs, it's the highest, the higher seeded team that gets last rock. So if you qualify through the A, you've got... Uh, Last Rock advantage in the quarterfinal and semifinal for sure. If it gets down to the final where you're playing the other A qualifier, then you'd have to draw. So as much as on the one side, you'd take any playoff spot you could get, there are some advantages to getting this spot through the A. Epping sitting two again and Erickson facing that same decision. Looking this time, I think, at just a straight draw around the center guard. The hit yeah. rolls there. Yeah, the hit rolls there, but are they thinking the draw just because it's just easier to make? Well, partly because it's easier to make, and I think the other factor there, you hit, you, you play the hit and roll and make it. John Epping's going to run the guard through, and then you're getting very close to a blank end. If you make the straight draw, he might do that anyway, and you're still looking at a deuce. <laughs> yeah. But I guess if, if for drawing, they're looking to go maybe back four to get they, some separation? They could get more separation with the draw, for sure. Yeah. Well, the other thing is with the draw, you can actually get your, your rock into a, a steel position. With this hit and roll, you're going to be at best top eight, and you don't really expect a steal with a rock like that. Yeah. Rasmus looking for the roll here. We're on an early sweep and just gonna roll past the, the guard. But starts to group the rocks on the other side a little bit. And maybe that's a little bit by design to get it a little bit closer to the to the T line. Well, certainly, uh, if Epping rolls behind cover now, he'll have a piece of the button. But you're right, deep enough that they might play a freeze to it. And look for the force that way. Patrick Jansen's had a few problems with line on his hits today. And I don't know whether he's just not matching the weight to the broom, but again, looking for uh, a little extra curl with the brush there. They do remove the stone. Continue to sit too. And it's actually a, a little bit of a tough double. Yeah. Not sure Erickson wants to play the double anyway, because then again, we're we're getting back to looking at a blank. A blank, yeah. So I, I think they were considering just hitting and kind of rolling on top of that, or, or do you, do you roll out? I, I think you have yeah. to play a roll either way, right? Either rolling he, on top or under cover. We talked about both options. You, you hit... And roll in front of the one on the 12 foot or hit and roll to the center. And I, I think I saw him discuss a third option as well. You could hit the stone on the edge of the 12 foot and roll underneath the yellow or all the way past to the guard. Uh, that leaves yeah. the yellow a little closer. The, the one yellow that's in the rings would still be in the 8 foot. Might be something you could use later as well. That rock in the 12 foot, if you play the roll to the middle here, that rock in the 12 foot's never helping you. It's always going to be the one that costs you the second point. Yeah. Whereas the one in the 8 foot, might be something you could use later. 
They discussed all the options. Going to make the play on the stone in the eight foot. And when they're coming at it from that side, I got to think they're playing the role towards the center guard. Yeah, I've got to think so. Uh, the hits and rolls haven't come easy this game, though. So we'll be definitely on them to manage this down here. Having to go early for the sweep. Might be a little too thick to get the roll all the way behind cover. Yeah. Does have shot rock. After the last two hits, that stone started to climb a little bit higher in the house. If uh, John Epping makes the roll behind center now, it's still going to be in the eight foot. And a freeze from uh, the Adin team would still leave a pretty good chance for two for John Epping. Switching on the yeah. sweepers now, uh, back and forth. Wants to get the roll, and if they're switching, that's usually a sign you're close. This really moving at the end, it's going to roll past the guard. So they're trying to roll well past now. You know, we've deb debated amongst curling circles for the past few years, certainly since the four rock and even back to the three rock, about... Uh, Coming home, would you rather be one up without last rock or one down with? Right here in this situation, I, I wonder if you're uh, Oscar Erickson, do you have a decision to make? <laughs> would you rather be tied up without last rock or two down and have last rock? Yeah. Because that it, it could come to that. I mean, it's shaping up like it could come, come to that where you have to make a decision. Are you going to give John Epping a chance for two? or a chance to blank. And that might be why they're looking at the draw right here. Hit and roll is still there. You'll be back four foot now. Yeah. And with the amount of movement we've seen on this ice, a rock that far back, uh, John Epping will have the ability to pass that one through the 12 foot, sit two again. You can certainly make the shot difficult. This one's a little thin. A little thin again and loses the shooter. Well, now, if you're John Epping, you can you can make your own choice, and you, yeah. he didn't hesitate at all. There's the there is the thought you could have come around here. You let them hit the open one. You're definitely going to have a chance for two, and you might even have a chance for three. He wants the blank. He wants that last rock in in the eighth. Now, here's the thing. If Oscar freeze. Erickson absolutely doesn't want to give him the blank, you play the freeze here. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. Well, the other option, instead of freezing the top corner, you could try to draw just past it oh, as well. Just, this is your first it, goal, like, right? Just come around partially it. Partially buried, yeah. Yeah. Make a good freeze just slightly on the center line side, though. And, and uh, John Epping can throw a lot of weight. He'll try to blast it, but it'll have to go 11 feet yeah. to get through the rings. The trouble with these shots is you don't get a lot of chance to play this. This is the Third game for both of these teams at this event. Much of the pregame practice is all geared towards the draw to the button. A lot of the uh, play in the in the game gets uh, geared towards going to the middle. So when you have to throw a, a rock like this wide to the edge of the 12 foot, you just haven't had a lot of chances to play this to know for sure exactly where to set the broom. It's a bit of a guess.
just the one shot or the one stone in play that the shot rock at the edge of the 12 foot oscar erickson looking to freeze onto the face of it if he can just slightly on the center line side well, it's pretty close here just need to curl up a little bit needed just a sh shade more weight too it comes up a little bit short Well, you have to think if John Epping was willing to peel the guard on the last one, he's going to he's going to rip that one out. Wouldn't peel the guard on the last one and then change your mind to go for two now. Yeah. Does have to be careful here. I don't think there's any danger he's going to underthrow this one. No. John Epping with his first with the big weight, just looking to kill the redstone, roll his shooter out of play. Oscar Erickson will have the same shot available for his last one. And again, the issue here is you, you play for the hit, you know that John Epping's going to blank. You take this shot. If you can weld it right on the corner, and boy, his line on the last one was pretty good. A couple of feet more close. weight. Yeah. Maybe tighten up the broom a hair. If you're any piece in front of that Yellowstone, of course, you do need to be shot rock. There's probably not going to be a shot for, for two for John Epping. You can make the blank difficult. Of course, you play a shot like this, and, and they didn't talk about it at all, and, and I don't think too many teams would play it, but if you're if you're absolutely determined that you're not going to let him blank, you throw this rock in the eight-foot on the other side and force him to hit it for two. Oh, yeah. This one appears to be a bit better. He's got a little bit more weight here, just waiting on on the line now. Did they wait too long? you got to get shot yeah. rock. Yeah. Uh, I think they're shot rock. Well, I think shot one of them shot rock. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to bet on who. I, I think it might be yellow. John Epping thinks it's yellow. He's he's ready to draw. But he will defer to uh, Matt Cam yeah. if it's close. The problem is you, you probably don't have a blank now. Like to double those two, you'd have to hit it on the nose. You hit it on the outside, you roll away, you're only getting one. You could play essentially the same draw that Oscar Erickson just threw and just chisel off that stone and make sure you've got two. Yeah, that's a scary shot to play, though, yeah. Well, I guess giving up a steel one isn't the worst thing here. I don't know. That's, yeah, the more I look at it, the more I'm, I'm starting to agree with you, Sean, that it might be, oh. Well, it, and it almost doesn't matter. I mean, if you didn't want a deuce... If, if it's that close, what do you do? Like, if it's close enough that you think you got a measure and you draw to the middle and you only get one, that's not great either. Everybody's taking a look at it. It's really close. With it being this close, do you think they're just going to try to make this 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 blank attempt here? Well, I, I don't think there is a blank. Where do you see the blank? Just, I mean, just hitting just high side of the, the red, like just uh, on the, uh, if you're playing out turn. Yeah. And then you, you Boy, that's the real precise. Side, you yeah, you I mean, over curl a little bit, you hit it on the nose, you're getting you one. Stuff it, yeah. You under curl a little bit, you drive it by, you're getting one. Oh, I don't know. This is. 
it's it's definitely there and i think that's what they're looking at that, that last indication is definitely there to with yeah, t-line weight just touch the inside just of it, it and roll yeah 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 that's... And you can get two that way for sure uh what, what does everyone in the ch we've got a thousand people in the chat <laughs> what do you guys think so question a i think most of them shot, are probably thinking then... i'm glad i'm not throwing it and then what's the call based on your assessment of who shot rock here So I think, Sean, your vote is the the same shot, just kind of chipped the inside of the uh, Yeah, I think, you know, it's so close, they can't be sure who's got shot rock, so you really can't ignore it. Yeah. And this is probably the the easier shot of the ones that they've got left, and, and made so partly because they just watch Oscar throw it twice, so they have a pretty good idea of the line. John's had outstanding draw weight all afternoon. Having to go to try to keep this high side here. Yeah, he wants to catch this as thin is as this possible. Light? This is really curling on him. This is well, I might have jinxed him. I talked about how great his draw weight's been all game, and they might be better not to touch it now. Ooh, and they back off, so. I think we're going to see the measuring stick come out. Yeah, I see a couple people chiming in chat. We've got one yellow and one red, so let's, let's go and put a stick to it and and uh if you guys could give us an indication on whose shot we would appreciate it well we we talked about it as the end started as the approach that the two teams were going to have and i said team Adeen is happy to see a single point go up on the board either way and they're going to have their wish now we'll just have yeah. to see a measure stick to come out to determine who's got the lead and who's got the hammer but this is probably the best case scenario for the Adeen team a single point either way yeah. Puts them in a manageable situation. They're either upcoming home or they've got last rock. Yeah, and that was well done. John Epping's yeah. had outstanding draw weight the entire game. Surprising to see him come up a little short on that one. Yeah. You know, that was a well played in by Team Adeen to, to get it to this kind of situation with, you know, no guards in play. And yeah, this is the result here. Again, they can be happy either way. A lot of times on these measurements, you don't see the stick touch both rocks. I think definitely it's going to touch both rocks this time. Yeah. And they're only going to measure it the once. Nobody pointed, so yeah. <laughs> we'll have a surprise for you when we come back from the commercial break to let you know who's got the lead. It's 4-4 four, four after 6. Somebody scored one. The 8th end will be, we'll have the 8th end for you right after this. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here. 
and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Ask questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any trilling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house look. Sean Joyce, Mark No with you here live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. We've had an exciting A event qualifier for you. After the measurement was John Epping picking up the single point in the seventh end. So he's got the lead coming home. They threw the two centers. It's always interesting to see how teams will approach this final end yeah. or potentially final end. The way this game has gone, I don't think we can rule out extras. Oh, no. I mean, it's been very, very evenly matched here. And, and we've, you know, it's a close game and evidenced by the two measures we've already had so far this game, including this last end. The Epping team had thrown up the two centers. Oscar Erickson called for one corner guard, but with two guards on the centers, calls for the next one into the top of the house. Ends up Sean Rock top four. Might have liked to be maybe six to eight inches higher. Yeah. Here's the freeze attempt. And maybe a little strong. Were they trying to tap that back? Doesn't get the line they were looking for. Just rubs it over a little bit and ends up in the back of the eight foot. An early chance for... Uh, Team of Dean to sit two behind cover. That's the two they would need to pick up the win here. Yeah, I, I wonder if they just thought it was kind of heavy and so they're trying to just to get to more of the nose on that one. If, uh, if this one's made, are we going to see John start running back his top ones here? Ah. Uh. Uh, well, my gut, my gut would say no, uh, because he's already in all kinds of trouble. Yeah. This... Wow. This one was wow. close to the corner guard, and it does actually get buried behind the center. Not second shot, though. It still sits for third and does leave room around the other side for uh, Patrick Jansen now to try to sit on the corner of shot stone. A little bit of a missed opportunity there for Christopher Sundgren. If he gets right down onto the face of his own stone, John Epping's going to have a hard time holding them to one here. Patrick Jansen now with his second stone of this end, his final of the second stones, a chance to sit on the corner of Shot Rock. And again, not much out of the brushers yet, waiting for it to curl. Coming in nicely now, and he will come down, nudge that stone, and, and stays on the corner. From the hack end, you can see he's still got half of that rock available, which gives him a way to get that red stone out later on. Not really much available for Oscar from the uh, outturn side. Looking at coming down and maybe tapping up the stone top of the eight foot a little bit of an angle they probably wouldn't mind moving that yellow if they could yeah i, th I think so yeah because they've got to be worried about that yellow rock not just because it's cutting off the button but john's going to be able to use that at some point yeah the angle so shot. good yeah i think they have to make a play on that and this is tough because when you're throwing the weight that you need to throw to move a red onto a yellow on an angle so you know you probably need back eight to back line weight to move two stones like that and you're still counting on it to get the finish you need by the guard. Tricky shot if the guard wasn't there. It's tougher still when you have to get by the guard. 
probably need to flirt with it a little bit, and he's got a lot of room. He's got a lot of room here. So it's going to make contact, I think, but... Well, he, he taps it in front of the yellow. It probably takes away the yellow angle, but left to double off his shooter. Rasmus not looking happy with that result. <laughs> the double is made you might actually see uh oscar erickson walk up and play the double peel needs to make sure he's got a shot to score at all looking for some curl here makes the hit does come across catches that second stone and just enough to get it all the way through the rings at the back does leave a little bit of a pocket though. It's not really super accessible at this point, but well, that's why I thought you might see him peel one guard at least. Yeah, you could you could make an argument here for just peeling the tighter of the two guards. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's there's enough curl here that you know if you get the tight one, you should be able to access all those rocks on the forefoot, but. just like kind of back four and just well no he's he's playing some weight at this i'm just not clear on which one he's trying to hit you, are you hitting the red one here and trying to stuff it on the one at the top of the forefoot or there is room there if you get by the red with big weight and just pick the side of the yellow they're both going to spin out and that that might be what they're playing the double on the yellows leave the red there yeah just like wow. that yep hard to say who's got shot rock right now but uh a lot of rocks yet to come certainly the uh redstone at the top of the eight foot in a strong position for the adine team yeah oh i don't know if i could take another measure here at this point <laughs> Matt Cam looking to come around to the top of the forefoot, get shot rock behind cover. Nothing out of the brushers in there. Plenty of room. Standing up a little straight. That's never a good sign. It's going to slide a little bit deep. Now, will it stop in time to be shot rock? It does. It does. Somebody needs to have a chat with Oscar. If you're going to look at the two rocks like that, at least point for us. Yeah. <laughs> it, it factors into his decision here because you could play a heavy draw, come down to the one that was just thrown, try to nudge it back and roll over on top of the other stone. Yeah. Of course, you make that shot and, and you've put John Epping into a spot where he's, he's going to have to play for the hard steal and he definitely has guards to work with. I mean, if yeah. they stop three feet shorter on that last one, you're in trouble. I mean, I honestly kind of like yeah that that are you talking about like kind of had to be drawn, kind of roll to the the one on the like five yeah. position. And, yeah. And if you touch it at all, you know you're sitting two. The problem yeah. is again, as soon as you're sitting two, and and you put John Epping into a spot where well I can't hold him, so I'm going to have to steal. He comes around in the middle. Yeah. So you could just do that first. You could draw to the top of the forefoot, forget about that rock at the top eight, just accept that it's never going to come back to count. But there's still room to score your two in the forefoot. Yeah. Looks like he did tap, uh, end up tapping the broom on the top four there. Or is this more of a discussion here? Huh. I, well, I think that's the two options they've looked yeah. at. And I think what they might be looking at is, is you come down and nudge it. And if it's short, but that's, there's a lot of difference between those two shots. Yeah. There's, I that's... think they're sticking to moving the back one. Yeah. Backline weight. Yeah. Because I, I suppose if this ever over curls right and you get to the inside and you just kind of play like the the hit, that's that's not a terrible result either. It's 
starting to curl now. Oh, this one's very close to the starting guard. to curl big now. It's not just the guard. Even if he got by the top guard, I'm not sure it was getting by the second one the way it was moving. Wow. Another chance for John Epping, this time with his first stone, to get something into the top of the forefoot area behind cover. Did move the guard over. Everybody's going to look at those two. Nobody's going to point. <laughs> yeah. That's... Well, moving that guard over, it's actually almost kind of taken away this uh, this the the quiet tap on the uh, on the red rock there, on the top of the yeah. But yeah, that's gone. So that's uh... it does. Uh... It narrows up the guards as well. It was almost two guards across with where that other one was situated. Now you've got about one and a half, counting that rock at the top of the eight foot. So harder to bury this in a position where they won't have a chance to make a play on it. And this is still a lot of room. Boy, look at that. It's still That's big nice movement there. here in the eighth end. He was closer to the corner guard than he was to the center guard and ends up almost dead buried. He did leave a corner of it. Rasmus Rana looking at playing the the angle run now. I think he's eyeing it up. I think that was a shot that they were probably looking at having for the last one, but it is yeah. it is there now. The only problem is it's kind of all or nothing. If you don't get that rock off the top of the button on this attempt, you might have a hard time scoring. I mean, what what are the other options here? Can you can, you can you play with quiet weight and then roll to the to the side there? Does that can. get you anything? You can still see a piece of that rock, so uh, you can definitely make a play on it with enough weight to move it back. <laughs> Tough to to move both of them. I mean, you could probably, with the finish there, you could probably get to enough of that Yellowstone to, to clip the one at the back of the four foot two, but I'm not sure you could do it with enough weight to move them both as far as you'd have to do it. Yeah, I think he's kind of tapping what I was thinking. If they can move that and then just roll to the just the side, like just the T line. Yeah, yeah, ideally. It's partially buried. Yeah. Interesting. The one thing that they haven't really looked at that I, that I'm seeing now, you could, and and it certainly comes with some risk. You could try to corner freeze the stone that uh, John Epping just threw. If he guards it, oh, you've yeah. got the angle run in for your last one. If he tries to take the angle run in, you've got the direct shot for your last one. He can't take yeah. them both away. Yeah. And Oscar did play an angle run in very similar to this. I think that was the second end. Just missed it. And I saw him make one of those yesterday. Looks like they're going to try to move it now, though. Picked up the brush a little bit early. Now waiting for some movement. Starting to move now. He's going to make contact with it. The question is going to be, close. does he have enough weight to push it back far enough? Just moves it far enough. He sits shot rock at the top of the forefoot. And uh, with where he left it, yes. very hard for John Epping to kill that stone. to try to pick it yeah Oof. it 
yeah this is thin to get it all the way over the top and if you don't if you if you even just clip one of those yellow stones yeah I mean, uh, oscar's gonna have the ability to come down to the other one and and uh he could even make the double if he had to yeah because nobody wants to tell us <laughs> who's got <laughs> shot between the one at the front and the one at the back they keep looking at it needs to get this as thin as he can wants to get it across the top not going to it does catch that stone stays at the 12 in the 12 foot that really isn't going to matter because uh Oscar Erickson, if he can make the like the double, yeah. the double, that extra rock on the side is not going to matter. He's not going to throw enough weight to probably kill the second one. He only needs to nudge it. If he doesn't nudge it, expect the measuring stick to yeah, come out again. Measure, yeah. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Christopher Sundgren taking a quick look there. Could you get it the other way? And you might be able to, right? Get the big weight come off the open uh... stone first yeah it's probably there it's certainly uh i mean it's tough because it's so flat but at least then you're not having to flirt with the guard and and play the quieter weight if you think you might make need to make the double anyway this it might be the way to play it yeah i think so yeah this is a good call here how do you like that with a guy that usually plays lead to see this shot <laughs> yeah what's what's a lead doing seeing the doubles <laughs> So Oscar Erickson with his final stone, the left-hander, this is his intern. Big weight looking to come off of what is actually second or third la third shot, comes straight across, kill the one off the back of the eight foot. And if he can stay right there, it would be for two. Makes the hit, comes yep. across, does Very nudge nice. it out, gets it all the way out of the rings. It's actually three points on the board. Team Dean coming through with the, the final will be a seven to five victory over John Epley. <laughs> That moves Adeen into the championship round. They will play in the quarterfinals at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We will have another draw for you, the other A qualifier. I'll be on the call for that. I think you're joining me for that one as well, Mark. Are you not? Uh, I'm I'm here whenever they tell me to. Uh, okay. I can't get enough of this, and so, yeah, probably I'll be on with you later. So we'll have the other A qualifier. will be at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And for John Epping, he drops into a B qualifier at 7 o'clock tonight. All of the action for you all weekend long will be available right here on the Sastail Curling Stadium. You can access all of the games through the uh, Curling Stadium YouTube feed. So we'll see you again at 2 o'clock. Bye, everyone. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com/sponsorships.